Good evening, mathematicians. Tonight's video is lesson 2.5, multiply using distributive property. We need to make sure that we are on page 31 in our Go Math book. And you need to make sure that you write down the essential question at the top of the page. How can place value help me multiply numbers with more than one digit? Go ahead and make sure this is written down at the top of page 31, and then we'll get started. Okay, friends, let's look at number one. Number one, they've already done for us, but we're going to just watch and see how they solve the problem. So we can see that we started with four times 19. Now, 19 can be a harder number to multiply by. So what they did was they used the distributive property, which is also referred to as the break apart method, and they broke apart the 19 into place values. So what they did was they said 19, I know that that is the one is worth 10, and the nine is worth nine ones. So they multiplied four times the 10, and then four times the nine. Now here, they can see that they put a model here for us. It's an array and it shows us four going down and then the top shows 10 across. And over here, we have four down and nine across. So they multiplied four times 10 and that makes 40 four times nine, and that makes 36. These numbers, the 40 and the 36, they are called partial products. They are part of our final product. To get our final product, we need to add them together. 40 plus 36 equals 76. And that's how they were able to solve four times 19 using the distributive property. Okay, let's look at number two, and we're gonna do this one together. We have five times 13. We're going to use the distributive property or our break apart method, and we're going to break up the 13 into an easier number to work with. Now we have a hammer here because we are going to break apart that 13 into place values, and we are going to say that this one is worth 10 and the 3 is worth 3 ones. Now we're going to multiply our 5 times our 10 and 5 times our 3. Let's go ahead and get our array ready and we're going to shade in the array to multiply our numbers. Okay. Now friends, I want you to make sure that you shade your model just like I shaded mine. We have one, two, three, four, five going down. And in our first section, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten across. So we're going to say that this is five and then ten across. Now on our second section, we have five going down and three across. So we're going to put our three on top. Now make sure that your model looks just like mine. Let's get ready to multiply. We're gonna multiply our five times our 10 first. And five times 10 is 50. Then we're gonna multiply our five times three. And we know that that gives us 15. Now remember, these numbers here are called our partial products. They are part of our final product. In order to get our final product, we need to add them. So we know that 50 plus 15 gives me 65. 65 is the product of five times 13, which is our final answer. 
All right, let's jump down to number four. Number four says three times 17. Now, you know what we're going to do to solve this problem. We're going to break apart our 17. We're gonna break it up into place values and we're going to say that the one is worth 10 and the seven is worth seven ones. Now, this model here that we have is showing three groups of 10, so three tens for our three times 10. And over here, we have three rows of seven ones. So it just looks a little bit different than our array, but it's the same thing. Now, boys and girls, I want you to see if you can set up your multiplication problems. Remember, we are going to distribute this three. We're gonna multiply it by the 10 and the seven and see if you can add the partial products and get your final product. Go ahead and work on that now. Okay, let's see how we did. We know that if we multiply three times our 10, we get 30 and three times seven gives us 21. Now these are the partial products. Now let's add them to make the final product. I know that 30 plus 21 gives me 51. So 51 is the product of three and 17, which is our final answer. Great job. All right, friends, let's jump down to number six, one of our problem-solving questions. It says, Michael arranged his pennies in the following display. How many pennies does Michael have in all? Now, we could just count up all the pennies, but there's an easier way. We're going to see, well, what type of problem did Michael start with? Let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows of pennies going down, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen pennies across. So I know that our problem is seven times. 13. Now, boys and girls, I want you to solve 7 times 13 using the distributive property or the break apart method, just like we did in the other problems. Go ahead and work on the problem and press play whenever you're ready to go over the answer with me. Okay, let's see how we did. I multiplied seven times 10, which gives me 70, and seven times three, which gives me 21. Now I know that 70 plus 21 are the partial products, which we need to add to give us the final product. So 70 plus 21 gives us 91 which is our final product. So how many pennies does Michael have in all? He has 91 pennies. How'd you guys do? Great job. Give yourself a star next to your answer on number six. All right, mathematicians, here's your homework for tonight. Your homework is going to be on page 32 and you're only going to work on numbers 1 and 2 for me. Only numbers 1 and 2. We're going to work on numbers 3 through 6 tomorrow in class. Don't forget you need to assess yourself at the bottom of page 31. Tell us whether you feel like you are a level 1 novice level two, apprentice, level three, practitioner, and a level four expert. Make sure to write this down at the bottom of page 31 for us. We will see you tomorrow in class for some fun activities. Have a good night. Bye.